can hide it from my friends but you lord read through my heart come in again come in again jesus is coming again lift all the trumpet and loud let it ring jesus is coming again Cheer up, we put greens, we joyful and sing. Jesus is coming again. Coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. Coming again, coming again. Jesus is coming again. Coming again. Coming again, Jesus is coming again. Acts of the Apostles, the chapter number one, the verse number eight. Acts one, verse eight, the word of God says, But you shall receive power. When the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. With these words, we welcome you tonight to our broadcast on Hope Television. We are live on Valley View University Radio 97.7. We are live on Amania 93.3. Thousands of people are watching us live on Facebook. And thousands of people are watching us currently here on Hope Television. We welcome you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we trust that the Lord has taken good care of you. And that is why you are seated wherever you are. To hear his message tonight. Tonight is a packed night. Therefore, we don't want to waste time. Wherever you are, may I ask that you bow down your head and pray with me. In the next 30 seconds, just ask Jesus, put your words in that young man's mouth and let us hear Jesus, your message and not his message, and your voice and not his voice. Please, in the next 30 seconds, wherever you are, just ask this short prayer for me as we launch into the word of God. Holy Father, you sent us. Today is day number seven. It's judgment day. The day the court is going to rule whether you are right or you are wrong. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, the Father, you and Christ, and the Holy Spirit will be present with me. And hold me as a microphone in your hands. And let your voice and your defense be heard, not mine. I pray that, Father, in Christ's name, send more angels on earth to come and assist those who are watching from far and near to understand. Every home, everywhere people are watching, let an angel stand by each person's side. Those who are sick, according to your word in Mark 16, let the word bring healing. Bless us tonight one more time. Take away the powers of powers of darkness from them. Let them not be able to operate until we are done this. We ask in Christ Jesus, your name with thanksgiving. Now, sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, take now this feeble lips of clay and use it as a microphone to teach, to educate, and to impart grace. I ask in Christ's name with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Once again, you are welcome to our broadcast. And we trust that the Lord is taking good care of you. And you are seated. You are the judges that I refer to as my lords. Tonight is judgment night. And before we start, the case number is EX20891017. That is the case number for this court session. And, my lords, respectfully, since tonight is a judgment night, and I indicated yesterday, 
I will be tendering in some books in evidence. I have me in my hands if the camera can capture it. The Catechism of the Catholic Church, which I am tendering in evidence, I will be relying on for my summary of defense. The Catechism of the Catholic Church. Can we have the camera capture that? It's very important for me. The Catechism of the Catholic Church include modification from editio typica or whatever. I think it's a Latin or Greek or whatever. But it is a book, my lords, I am tendering in for evidence tonight. Again, I have in my hands the convert catechism of Catholic doctrine, which was written by the very learned Reverend Peter Gaiman. My lords, I shall be relying on it for evidence tonight, so I want to turn that in. My lords, I have in my hands tonight the Holy Quran, the Holy Quran of my brothers from the Muslim faith. I will be relying on it tonight for my summary of evidence, and therefore I want to tender it in. My lords, before I go on tonight, I wish to state that yesterday my clients made an amount of $1,000 at the registry of this court that anyone will be able to prove from the Bible and the Bible alone that the fourth article of heaven's constitution is abrogated, that person should go for that amount of money. And my lords, my check this afternoon when I was coming, I passed by the registry and I was told that nobody has come for the money, indicating that nobody has been able to prove from the Bible the sanctity of Sunday worship. So my lords, until we are done, the money is still there. We want to keep it there if somebody will be able to do that. My lords, yesterday, I also mentioned that I shall be relying on some documents in the course of my submission of summary of evidence I will be showing them on the screen for your lordships to see. When we started about three days ago, counsel for the plaintiff has raised six solid arguments against the sanctity of the Sabbath worship or the seven-day Sabbath, which is enshrined in the constitution of heaven, which has not been abrogated. And I want to quickly, my lords, to go through those arguments and how, by the grace of God, I have refuted them. My lords, the first argument the counsel for the plaintiff raised was the Sabbath is Jewish, it is not for Christians, and therefore Christians are not bound to keep the Sabbath. My lords, in my defense, with respect to that argument, I stated in this court that God gave the Sabbath the seventh day of the week as an Independence Day celebration of the Republic of Heaven, if you please, my lords. And therefore, God gave it to Adam and Eve, who were our first parents. And therefore, the Sabbath was not given to the Jews. It was given to humankind, our first parents. Again, my lords, I refuted that argument by stating in this court that when you read Mark chapter 2, verse 28, Exodus 28 to 10, my lords, the Sabbath or the seventh day is referred to as the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. It's not months. Again, in this court, I nullify that argument by saying that if the Sabbath is Jewish, which is Article 4 of the Constitution of Heaven, then my learned friend is telling me that all the other nine is Jewish or are Jewish and therefore nobody is bound to keep them. I am referring to going to church and still worshiping idols. I am referring to not, uh, I'm referring to why you dishonor God's name. I am referring to don't murder, don't kill. I am referring to don't commit adultery. If the Sabbath, which is Article 4, is, my Lord, Jewish, then the rest of the Ten Commandments are Jewish. And therefore, when somebody kills our nation, 
The nation of Ghana should not send a person to court and punish him or her. When somebody steals your thing, you should be quiet. When armed robbers come to your house to rob, you should not report. When somebody with a greater respect, my lords, sleep with someone's wife, the laws of the republic should have nothing to do with a person because they are Jewish. My lords, and since they are not Jewish, it, they are enshrined in our constitution. All the six, that is on the second table. Again, my lords, I stated in this court that baptism is Jewish. Therefore, if my learned friend and his team claims that the Ten Commandments is Jewish, the Sabbath is Jewish, then Christians should not baptize because Jesus was a Jew, so to speak, and the John the Baptist was a Jew, Lord's Supper is Jewish, Titan is Jewish, the Bible itself, this book was not written by any Ghanaian, was not written by any South African, was not written by any Malawian. They were written, this book was written purely by Jewish people. And therefore, Christians who have nothing to do with Jewish book. My Lord, again, my learned friend raised an argument that the Sabbath cannot be kept because throughout history, it has been lost. The Sabbath can be kept on any other day. He was asking whether the Sabbath can be kept on any other day. And my Lord, I refuted that argument by saying that the independence of Ghana, we had it on 6 March 1957 by the famous Kwame Nkrumah and his team. This is known throughout the world. And therefore, it cannot be changed. No parliament, not the executive branch of government, nor the judiciary, can change this well-known date. The Bible says the Independence Day for heaven, or the Independent Day for which we should celebrate, is the seventh day of the week, and therefore, it cannot be changed. Since Ghana cannot change her Independence Day, my Lord, again, my learned friend stated, in his submission of argument, he said, Christ Jesus, when he died on the cross, abolished the law. My Lord, I stated yesterday during my submission that the laws that Christ abolished on Calvary Tree, they were the ceremonial and sacrificial laws and ordinances. They were the blood offerings, the meat and drink offerings, the special yearly holidays and yearly Sabbath. And I referred this court yesterday, my lords, to Leviticus chapter number 23, where there are about six or seven yearly Sabbaths. And therefore, Jesus did not die to nullify or immortalize sin, to do away with the Ten Commandments. He didn't die to do that. Again, my lords, my learned friend in his argument number four said, the Sabbath has been lost over the century. We don't know what day is the Sabbath. We argued it out yesterday in this court that the weekly Sabbath has never been changed. Historians and astronomers tell us that it has not been changed and it will not be changed. Again, we said if we want to prove it, we should ask the Jews. Currently, my lords, when you go to Israel, they still keep the seven-day Sabbath, which is Saturday. My lords, again, I said yesterday night, in my defense, that if the time or the day has been changed, St. Jesus Christ wrote it himself when he came, he would have set it right. But since he didn't touch it, it means that the day is still valid. It has not been lost. Again, my Lord, I proved in this court yesterday beyond every reasonable doubt that one Dr. Mead Jones from England studied 160 ancient and modern languages and out of this 160 ancient and modern languages, my lords, the seventh day is referred to as the Sabbath day. Again, yesterday in my defense, my lords, I said in this court, and it was proven beyond all reasonable doubt, that Jesus died on Friday. And that is why my Sunday keepers, my friends on the other side, but during Easter, they celebrate Easter Friday. And then during Easter Sunday, they go to church because Christ has risen. In between Friday and Sunday, my Lord, was the Sabbath, according to the Bible. And yesterday, we tender in evidence, books, and the Bible to prove that. My Lord, again, responding to that argument, we said in the Ashanti kingdom, those who are born on Monday are called Kwejo. 
those who are born on Tuesday are called Kwabena. Wednesday bonds are called Kweku. Thursday Yao. Friday Kofi. Saturday Kwame. Sunday Kwesi. And God is referred in the Ashanti kingdom or the Ashanti dialect chi as Chedi Ampon Kwame, the God of Saturday. Which means Saturday is the day of God. And that is why the Ashanti don't play with Saturday at all. It is called in their language, Memene Dadapa, a good Saturday. Again, my Lord, I said yesterday in my defense that people call the white man Kwesi, which is the name we give to the day name we give to Sunday bonds. It is because the white man is called Kwesi Broni, simply because the reason is, my Lord, because he brought Sunday worship to Africa or to Ghana or to the world, so to speak. And that is why in our part of the world, our people called the white man Kwesi Broni. Before he came, our people, indigenous people, my Lord, knew God as the Saturday God. Again, my learned friend, his argument number five yesterday said, but didn't the apostles change the day after Christ's ascension? And my Lord, we said that can only happen if someone can prove that from the Bible. My Lord, I have in my hands this hour the convert catechism of the Catholic doctrine. And if my Lord will allow me to read page 50 of that book, a question is asked, why did the Catholic Church substitute Sunday for Saturday? And the answer is given, my Lord, the church substituted Sunday for Saturday because Christ rose from the dead on Sunday and the Holy Ghost descended upon the apostles on Sunday. And that is why Christians worship on Sunday. This is Catholic Catechism. My Lord, edited or written by the Reverend Leonard Peter Gaiman. And my Lord, it is not founded in Bible or on Bible. And therefore, it cannot be admissible in this court. My Lord, the last argument my learned friend raised yesterday was, we shall be saved by grace and not by works. And therefore, Sabbath keepers should go away. They should do away with their noise. My Lord, I stated yesterday, grace simply in the Bible means what you cannot do and God empowering you through the Holy Spirit to do. My Lord, my Sunday friends confuses both grace and mercy. Mercy is undeserved favor. But grace is the Holy Spirit that is given to us to empower us to do what we cannot do. So, my Lord, throughout the past two days, these have been the arguments my learned friend has raised. Tonight, as the Lord, the court directed, we are going to do the summary of evidence. And my Lord, before I go into my summary of evidence, like I said, I've tended in three books that I was able to bring here. Because of the voluminous nature of all my 14 books and articles, I could bring only three. But my Lord, if this court recalled, yesterday I said, in order for me not to be accused of bad faith, I provided 14 articles, books, magazines, and newspapers that I will be relying on tonight in my summary of evidence. As my Lord can see on the screen, I am relying on tonight Martin Luther's 95 Theses. Again, the convert catechism that I've brought here of Catholic doctrine, the Catholic record of September 1st, 1923. Plain talk about Protestantism of today. Page 213, I'll be using it. It was written by the famous Monsigo Signal. My Lord, I shall be relying on the Catholic mirror, September 16th, 1893. Again, the famous Robert Milligan has written a book, Scheme of Redemption which was published by Bethany Press, 1962. But as tonight, in my summary of evidence, I shall be quoting from page 401. Again, my lords, tonight, Cardinal James Gibbons, Faith of Our Fathers, 16th edition, 1880. I shall be quoting in support of my evidence, page 111. Harris Franklin Raw wrote an article in Methodist Magazine, my Lord, tonight I shall be quoting from there. Again, Isaac Williams has written a book, Plain Sermons on Catechism. My Lord, tonight I shall be quoting from page 334 and 336. The famous theologian T.C. Blake, in his book, Theology Condensed, will be used tonight in evidence. My Lord, the Holy Quran 
which when I was about to start, I tendered it in in evidence, will be quoted tonight. There are five solid quotations in the Holy Quran that support that states that the Sabbath day is Saturday. I will be quoting that. Again, an article by David A. Womack titled, A Sunday the Lord's Day, which he published in the Pentecostal Evangel, August 9, 1953, number 2361. I shall be quoting page 3 of that article. My Lord, finally, tonight, I will be quoting from Martin Luther's Oxford Confession of Faith, Article 28, Paragraph 9. My Lord, if the court will grant me the permission now, since we don't have much time and I have a lot to say tonight, I want the court's indication so that I can proceed in my summary of evidence. As your lordship pleases, my lord, tonight, I am doing my final summary of evidence to prove to the whole world and this court that God's constitution, the Ten Commandments, that is found in Exodus chapter 20, which was written with the finger of God, is still valid. It has not been abrogated. Jesus did not annul it when he died on the cross. My Lord, before I enter into the evidence, I want this court to know that everything that God has, Lucifer has a counterfeit. Everything that God has, Satan has created a counterfeit. My Lord, for the evidence and for the records of the court, let me go through a few of them. God has his angels. Lucifer too has his angels. Revelation 12, 3 to 4, talks about the angels of the devil. My Lord, God has his throne. Lucifer has created a throne. Psalm 94, verse number 20. My Lord, in 1 Timothy 4, 1, God has his doctrines. Lucifer has created his doctrines. Again, my Lord, in Revelation 16, 13 to 15, God has his prophets. Satan has his prophets. And these prophets, my Lord, the Bible says by their works we shall know them. Some of them bath women in the night. Some of them sell cocoa. Some of them sell all kinds of things. Some of them preach prosperity. They don't preach the word of God. My Lord, some of them preach what they don't practice and we know them. In the book, Revelation 16, some of them perform signs and wonders in the name of bad Jesus. And he has impersonated Christ, and they think that he is Christ. Revelation 16, 14, 13 to 14 says, My Lord, and I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of demons, performing signs and wonders, which go out of the kings of the earth and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of that great day of God. Bible is clear. Some of the signs and wonders being performed by these pastors are purely as a result of demonic manifestation. My Lord, God has his pastors. Satan has his pastors. 2 Corinthians the chapter 11, the verses 13, 14, and 15 says, Satan has his pastors, God has his pastors. 2 Corinthians 11, 13, 14, and 15. My Lord, with the permission of your Lordship, I want to read it for such our false apostles. I am reading 2 Corinthians 11, 13 to 15. Deceitful workers of darkness, transforming themselves into apostles of light. And no wonder, Satan himself has transformed himself into an angel of light. Today, Satan goes to church, my Lord. Therefore, it is no great thing if his pastors, his ministers, also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness. And the Bible tells us, my Lord, their end will be according to their work. My Lord, finally, God has his church. Satan has created his church. Revelation chapter 2, verse number 9 says, I know your works, tribulation and poverty, but you are rich. And I know the blasphemy of those who, who say they are Jews and they are not. But they are a synagogue of Satan, which is a church of Satan. My Lord, we have said throughout the three days in defense that anyone who claims to love Jesus must keep his commandments as Christ himself said in John 14 verse 15. 
Our blessed Lord said, if you love me, keep my commandment. And therefore, my Lord, anybody who claims to love the Lord Jesus Christ must, as a matter of fact, keep the commandments of God. My Lord, tonight, in my summary of evidence, I want this court to be educated a bit on how the change from Saturday to Sunday occurred. And with the court class already, my Lord, I request that this evidence that I'm coming to give will be recorded so that future generations will get to know and read about it. My Lord, in the book of Daniel, chapters number 2 and 7, God gave two different kinds of dreams to Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, and Daniel, his servant. But these two dreams, my Lord, all that they saw, what Daniel saw and what Nebuchadnezzar saw, meant the same thing. My Lord, this is what Nebuchadnezzar saw. In Daniel chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar saw this image. The head was gold. The breast area was silver. The waist area bronze. The feet purely iron. And the legs purely iron, my Lord. I beg your pardon. And the feet iron mixed with clay. When King Nebuchadnezzar's wise men were not able to explain, Daniel, God gave Daniel, who was then a captive, in Babylon, on an exile, wisdom and knowledge to explain it. And my Lord, as you can see on the screen, Daniel explained this image to mean that at the end of all these empires, which I'm going to go through soon, a stone will come and hit the image from the feet and it will break it down. And that stone, my Lord, is going to fill this earth and that stone will be the kingdom of Jesus Christ, which will never pass away. My Lord, on the other hand, in Daniel chapter 7, as your Lord said, can see on the screen, Daniel was given a similar dream, but this time around, not an image. But Daniel saw four different kinds of beasts. My Lord, as I've already said, and all learned theologians know, these kind of dreams, the two, are the same kind of kinds of dreams. And it means the same thing. My Lord, if the court will allow me to go through, Daniel chapter number 2, verse 38 and Daniel 7, 4, what Nebuchadnezzar saw was a golden head. What Daniel saw was a lion with an eagle wings. And it represented the Babylonian Empire, which was headed by Nebuchadnezzar. According to the dream, Babylonian Empire was to pass. After reigning in the world for some time, the next kingdom that was to come was the breast. But also, it represented the Medians and the Persians Empire. The animal that Daniel saw was a bear. My lords, that empire has come and gone. Again, the next empire came. The Grecian Empire. Daniel 2, 39. And Daniel 7, 6. Alexander the Great was the leader of this empire. The animal, as my lords can see, is a leopard with four wings. Daniel 7, verse 7. My lords, as Daniel was being shown a dream, Daniel tells us the fourth beast that he saw representing the fourth kingdom or empire in the world. Daniel said he could not mention or give a name to that animal he saw. And my Lord, Daniel 7, verse 7, this is how Daniel described it. If your Lord will allow me, I want to read it. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible, exceedingly strong. It had huge iron teeth. It was devouring, breaking in pieces, trampling the residue with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. My Lord, history tells us this iron kingdom, this dreadful kingdom, was the Roman Empire, the great Roman Empire. This represents the time of the Caesars and the Pompeys. My Lord, it was during this period that Jesus was born and Jesus was died. My Lord, during this period as well, the Christian faced terrible persecution. Daniel tells us in Daniel 7 verse 8, as I continue my summary of evidence tonight, my Lord, if this court will allow me to read it, I was considering the horns. And there was another horn. A little horn. 
emphasis on the a little horn. Coming up among them, before whom three of the first horns were plucked out by the roots, and there in this horn, the little horn, were eyes like the eyes of a man, and mouth speaking pompous words. My Lord, as you can see on the screen, this little horn that came and uprooted three of the ten horns is having eyes, is having mouths that speak pompous words. My Lord, as we all know, this horn will be discovered very soon. But my Lord, if this court will allow me, I want to prove from the Bible and the Bible alone this time round. Daniel chapter 7, 24 to 25. The ten horns, what it represents, Bible tells us the ten horns that the ten horns are ten kings who shall arise from this kingdom. In other words, my Lord, the ten horns, which another horn came and uprooted three of the horns, came from the iron kingdom, Roman Empire, and another shall arise after them. He shall be different from the first ones and shall subdue three kings. That's what we're talking about. He shall speak pompous words against the Most High. Pompous words against the Most High. My client, he shall try, he shall persecute the saints of the Most High. My Lord, I continue on, and he shall intend to change times and laws. Then the saints shall be given unto his son for a time and times and half a time. My Lord, this is what the Bible says. My Lord, your justices are learned men. And you know in history that after the Roman Empire exited, Europe was divided into ten different kinds of countries or kingdoms. A horn in prophecy, my lords, represent kingdom, represent country or whatever. Respectfully, my lords. And I pray that this court will hear me tonight in evidence. My lords, after the exit of the Roman Empire, the next powerful empire that came, so to speak, or the next power that had both religion on its side and secular power on its side, my lords, was the purpose. This is history. And see your justices know this. I'm sure, my lords, you understand me now. After the Roman Empire, the next religious political power that took over from the Roman Empire was the papacy, which has its headquarters in the Vatican. My lords, the Bible says the saints were to be given to the hands of this power for 1,260 years. My lords, as you can see on the screen tonight, since it's my summary of evidence, I want your lordship to see everything. This power came into being from 538 AD and ended in 1798 when during the French Revolution, General Bathia came and took the Pope captive and broke the power of this power, which is the papacy, that had both political and religious power. My Lord, during this period of 1,250 years, my Lord, history tells us 50 million believers were killed. During this period of 1,200 years in history, my Lord, it is referred to as the Dark Ages. During this period, only the priest had access to the Bible. No Christian had access to the Bible. So the Bible was interpreted by the priests according to how they understood it. My Lord, during this period of 1,260 years, many of the things were set ablaze. As my Lord can see on the screen, many of the believers were killed as thick. Many of them, many of them. My Lord, during this period, this religious political power starved lions. And then when the lions have been well starved, my Lord, saints of God were thrown to them and they devoured them. My Lord, I refer to Daniel. The Bible said the saints were to be given to this power for a time and times and have a time. And when you calculate this in prophecy, my Lord, you get 1,260 years. During this period, my Lord, God was not silent. In every generation, God raises someone who will speak for him. 
And therefore, my Lord, during this time of the papacy, a gentleman by name Martin Luther, who was a Catholic, realized what the church was doing was wrong. And therefore decided, my Lord, I'm referring to the 1500s, one day sat down and wrote 95 theses or 95 things that he thought that the church was doing which were not right. And my Lord, this is history. Martin Luther posted this 95 thesis on Wittenberg Church, as my Lord can see on the screen. My Lord, when, Luz uh, when Martin Luther did this, he was invited by the highest council of the church. When they met, it was called the Diet of Worms. My Lord Luther was called simply to come and recant what he has written. And my Lord, when Luther was brought before these great men, as my Lord can see on the screen, my Lord, I want to quote from Oxford's confession. This is what Luther said. And as my Lord can see on the screen, Martin Luther, when he was asked to recant the 95 theses, Luther, Luther said, my conscience is captive to the word of God. And to go against conscience is neither safe nor right. Here I stand. I can do no other. I cannot and I will not recant. So help me God. My Lord, when Luther made this bold declaration that what he has written, he is not going to recant. My Lord, Luther was excommunicated from the church. If your lordship will allow me to cite an example of one of the things the church was doing. The church was selling, selling what we call indulgences. Your lordship, if tomorrow you plan to commit a sin, this is what indulgences means. If tomorrow you plan to commit a sin, there was a gentleman that the Pope at the time mandated to go and sell forgiveness. So if your lordship want to commit a sin tomorrow, he will come to you, then you pay money, and then the sin that you commit tomorrow, the Pope will forgive you. My Lord, that is why one of the reasons why if even up till now, my brothers from the Catholic faith still go for confession. Because the Pope has power, according to this catechism, and what I'm having here, the Pope has power on earth to forgive sin. And therefore, Texel was selling indulgences. If you want to be forgiven, you can pay for your forgiveness ahead of time, before the committer of the sin. My Lord, tonight, after giving this brief history, I want us to look at a book on the screen which I have in my hand, the Catechism of the Catholic Church and the Convert Catechism of the Catholic Doctrine. My Lord, I hold these two books in my hands and in the next few minutes, I am going to prove from these books that the Catholic Church, my Lord, there is no need to mince words. They claim from their own books that they changed the day of worship from Saturday to Sunday. My Lord, I have in my hands convert catechism. In the convert catechism, my Lord, if your Lordship will allow me to read from it, or if I should read from the screen, in the convert catechism, my Lord, it is written, let me read from the screen, my Lord, since I'm not able to open to the page early. It says, which is the Sabbath day? In the convert catechism, I hope my hand, if anybody doubts this, he can come and collect it and read it. Which is the Sabbath day? My Lord, in the convert catechism, the answer is given. Saturday is the Sabbath day. Again, the question I ask in the catechism, why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday? My Lord's answer is given. We observe Sunday instead of Saturday because, my Lord, I've opened to the page if the camera can catch me, so that everybody can see. Why do you observe Sunday instead of Saturday? Answer, we observe Sunday instead of Saturday because, my Lord, I want you to also know, so let's have it on the screen so that your lordship can follow. We observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church. That little home, that came and uprooted three of the kingdoms. says it is responsible for the change. Why do you observe Sunday instead of Saturday, they ask? Because the Catholic Church 
transferred the solemnity. But Lord, as you can see on the screen, from Saturday to Sunday. So they claim in their own book that they caused the change. My Lord, I have two catechism here. If anybody wants to doubt your lordship, I have tendered it already in evidence. Somebody can come for it and read it. My Lord, tonight, as I said, I'm going to rely on 14 books and articles, newspaper publications, and magazine. And my Lord, if this, your lordship will allow me, let me quickly go through. First, the Catholic records. September 1st, 1923. The Catholic records. September 1st, 1923. This was published September 1st, 1923 in London. My Lord, it says, the observance of Sunday by Protestants. My Lord, if your Lordship would like me to explain Protestantism, it simply means the individuals after Martin Luther's 95 Thesis who did not agree with the Catholic Church and left the Catholic Church to form their own individual denominations. These churches are referred to as Protestant denomination. So my Lord, Presbyterian example, Baptist, Methodist, and the rest, they are referred to as Protestant churches. And the Catholic record, September 1st, 1923, is saying, the observance of Sunday by Protestants is a homage they pay in spite of themselves to the authority of the Catholic Church. My Lord, this is history. This is an article. And it is available for anybody to read. Again, my Lord, I am quoting from Monsignor Signal in his book, Plain Talk About Protestantism of Today, page 213. Monsignor said, Sunday, he is a very revered, recognized Catholic priest. Sunday is our mark of authority. My Lord, if your Lord still recalls, the Bible tells us that a little horn will speak pompous words. And, my Lord, if you agree with me, I think that this statement is purely pompous. Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible. And, the, and this transference of Sabbath observant is proof of that fact. My Lord, this is a Catholic scholar. I did not write it. If your Lord will allow me to read it again. Sunday is our mark of authority. The church is above the Bible. And this transference of Sabbath observant is proof of that fact. My Lord's Catholic Mirror, September 16th, 1893. Catholic Mirror, September 16th, 1893. My Lord, I was trained in my profession not to denigrate or degrade any church or any person. My Lord, I don't have any intention to speak against the Catholic Church. My Lord, if your Lordship recall, I have stated in this court before, that if we are looking for the learned theologians in the world, majority of them are Catholics, Catholic priests, learned theologians. If we are looking for a church currently in the world, that is into humanitarian stuff. My Lord, the Catholic Church is fantastic. Catholic Relief Organization. They have built schools. They have hospitals. They are helping our society. It's a good church in terms of humanitarian things. But my Lord, when it comes to the Bible, it's a poor church. Catholic Mirror. September 16th, 1893. My Lord, it stays nine times. As your Lord can see on the screen, nine times do we find the Sabbath referred to in the Act. That is Acts of the Apostles. But it is the Saturday, the old Sabbath. So our readers desire proof. We refer them to chapters and verses in each instance. And my Lord, as you can, as you can see on the screen, they give instances, Acts chapter 13, verse 4, verse 27, verse 42, verse 44. Once more, Acts 15, 21. Again, Acts 16, 13. Acts 17, verse 2. Acts 18, verse 4. My Lord, this is Catholic mirror. I'm continuing. Thus, the Sabbath into bracket Saturday, their own book, their own magazine, from Genesis to Revelation. Thus, it is impossible to find in the New Testament the slightest interference by the Savior or his apostles with the original Sabbath. That of those who follow the Sabbath as their guide, my lords, 
the Catholic Mirror, September 16, 1893, saying that those who follow the Bible as their guide, the Israelites and the Seventh-day Adventists have the exclusive weight of evidence on their side, while the biblical protestant has not a word in self-defense for his for this substitution of Sunday for Saturday. My Lord, this is their own book. Again, my Lord, I quote from Cardinal James Gibbons, Faith of Our Fathers, 16th edition, 1880, page 111. Faith of Our Fathers, a book authored by Cardinal James Gibbons, who was a Catholic priest. Faith of Our Fathers, 16th edition, 1888, page 111. The learned theologian says, you may read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And you will not find a single line authorizing the sanctification of Sunday. This is a Catholic priest speaking. The scripture enforces the religious observance. Saturday, a day which we, then he put in the bracket, Catholics, never sanctify. But well, this is a learned Catholic cardinal, Cardinal James Gibbons. If your Lord will allow me to read it again for evidence. You may read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and you will not find a single line authorizing the sanctification of Sunday. The scripture enforced religious observance of Saturday, a day which we Catholics never sanctify. My Lord, again in my evidence, I told this court I'll be using 14 books, newspapers, and articles. Scheme of Redemption, which was written by Robert Milligan. If the court, my Lord, if you allow me to mention, Robert Milligan was not a Catholic priest. He was a Church of Christ scholar. Church of Christ. One of the Protestant denominations. Robert Milligan, his book, Scheme of Redemption, 1962, page 40 says, Finally, we have the testimony of Christ on this subject. In Mark 2, 27, he says, The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. From this passage, it is evident that the Sabbath was made not merely for the Israelites. As Pali, my Lord Pali was like my learned counsel. He was trying to refute the genuineness and the validity of the seventh day. As Pali and Hedersberg would have us to believe. But from man, that is for the race. Robert Milligan goes ahead and says, Hence we conclude that the Sabbath was sanctified from the beginning. And it was given to Adam, even in Eden as one of those primeval institutions that God ordained for the happiness, happiness of all men. My Lord, this is a church of Christ scholar, not even a Catholic person. Again, my Lord, I quote from Isaac Williams, Plain Sermons on Catechism, page 334 and 336. Isaac Williams, Plain Talk on Catechism, page 334, 336. He says, And where are we told in Scripture? that we are to keep the first day at all. We are commanded to keep the seventh day, but we are nowhere commanded to keep the first day. Your Lordship, I am sure this court, by now, you have begun writing your judgment in favor of my client. With all these evidence that I've laid before this honorable court, Again, my lords, I want to quote from the Christian Advocate. It's a magazine. Published July 2nd, 1947 by Harris Franklin Wall. He was a Methodist scholar. Methodist church scholar. Harris Franklin Wall. He says, take the matter of Sunday. There are no indications in the New Testament as to how the church came to keep the first day of the week. It's not in the Bible. You can't find it anywhere. And that is why we have $1,000 at the registry now. If anybody can prove from this book and this book alone, you should go for that money. I'm reading again, your lordships. Take the matter of Sunday. There are indications in the New Testament as to how the church came to keep. Your lordship, permit me to read again. Take the matter of Sunday. There are indications in the New Testament as to how the church came to keep the first day of the week. He continues. As its day of worship. But there is no passage telling Christians to keep that day 
or to transfer the Jewish Sabbath to that day. He even called the Sabbath a Jewish, which I have refuted that argument in this court. He is a Methodist, and he wrote that the Sabbath is still valid. Again, my laws, I'm quoting from the learned theologian, T.C. Blake, Doctor of Divinity, Theology Condensed. His book is called Theology Condensed. Doctor of Dis Divinity, T.C. Blake, page 474, page 475. He says, until. And my lords, if the Lord, your lordship wants to know, this is a Presbyterian minister. This T.C. Blake, Doctor of Divinity, learned man from the Presbyterian Church. Let's listen to what he says. Until, therefore, it can be shown that the whole moral law my lords, if your lordship would like to know, the Ten Commandments is what referred to as the moral law. Until, therefore, it can be shown that the whole moral law has been repealed, the Sabbath will stand. The teachings of Christ confirm the perpetuity of the Sabbath. My lords, this is a Sunday keeper, a Sunday learned professor, a Sunday priest from the Presbyterian Church. My lords, again, I quote an article by David A. Womack, who was a Pentecostal scholar. Womack published an article in the Pentecostal Evangel, August 9, 1959, number 2361, page 3. Your lordships, I quote, Why do we worship on Sunday? Doesn't the Bible teach us that Saturday should be the Lord's day? Apparently, we will have to seek the answer from some other sources than the New Testament. Lords, this man has also confirmed that the Sabbath is still valid. Again, I'm quoting from Oxford Confession of Faith. I told this court, my lords, yesterday that I shall be relying on 14 books and articles and newspapers. My lords, Oxford Confession of Faith, paragraph 9. Martin Luther says, They, into bracket the Catholics, allege the Sabbath change into Sunday, the lost day, contrary to the Decalogue. My lords, Decalogue means the Ten Commandments. As it appears, neither is there any example more boasted of than the changing of the Sabbath day. Great, they say, is the power and authority of the church since it dispenses with one of the Ten Commandments. Your Lordship, it saddens my heart tonight. I have in my hands the convert catechism of the Catholic doctrine. My Lord, when you read chapter V, page 48, unfortunately, my Lord, even though it's not admissible in this court, but I want to state for the record that I have a Catholic Bible, but I forgot to bring it. And in the Catholic Bible, as it is here in the Catholic Catechism, the Ten Commandments has been divided into some way. And my Lord, I want to read it for the court to hear. The first commandment in the Catechism and in the Catholic Bible is the same thing. Says, what is the first commandment? And they answer. The first commandment is, I am the Lord thy God, thou shalt have no other God before me. My Lord, the second commandment states, page 49 of the Convert Catechism, what is the second commandment? The second commandment is, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. My Lord, is that what is in the Bible? Is that the second commandment? This is convert catechism of the Catholic Church. This is Bible. The second commandment in the Bible says, Thou shalt not bow to any graven image. My Lord, with a grace and respect to my Catholic friends, they did away with the second commandment in the Bible so that they can bring statues, St. Anthony, St. Peter, St. whatever, to the church so that they can bow. And that is why when you enter Catholic Church, faithful Catholic bow. To images. Because if they are not taking that second commandment away, they can't bow. But the second commandment in the constitution of heaven has not been abrogated. They say, what is the second commandment? The second commandment, they answer, is thou shalt not take the name of thy Lord, thy God, in vain. A lot in the heaven's constitution. That commandment is the third commandment. For the sake of time, lords, I want to go to the third one. They ask the question, what is the third commandment? And the answer, the third commandment is, remember that thou keep holy the Sabbath day. My Lord, that is not a third commandment. That is the fourth commandment. It means there is an agenda. 
If your lordship will indulge me, I want to read all respectfully, quickly. Manos, the fourth commandment, they ask, what is the fourth commandment? The fourth commandment is, honor thy father and thy mother. What is totally wrong? It's not true. <laughs> your lordship, the fourth commandment, which is the fourth article of the constitution, that talks about the Sabbath now in the Catholic Catechism and the Catholic Bible has now been replaced. It is now the third commandment. But also the fifth commandment, for the sake of time, what is the fifth commandment? They ask in their catechism. The fifth commandment is thou shalt not kill. My Lord, it's not true in the Bible. What is the seed commandment? The seed commandment is thou shalt not commit adultery, which is in the Bible, the seventh commandment. My Lord, they ask, page 53 of the Convert Catechism of Catholic Doctrine, what is the seventh commandment? My Lord, in the Bible, the seventh commandment is thou shalt not commit adultery. Let's see what they say here. The seventh commandment, what is the seventh commandment? The seventh commandment is, Thou shalt not steal. My Lord, I am reading from their book. Again, my Lord, they ask, What is the eighth commandment? Hmm. The eighth commandment is, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Oh, no. And my Lord, when you get to the tenth commandment, for the sake of time, I want to leave that. The Ten Commandments, they've divided into two. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. And that is Ninth Commandment. And then the Ten Commandment, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's property. Their own book. I'm not saying anything different. So they've divided the Ten Commandments, the Ten Commandments into two. So that they can do away with image worship. In order for them to bring images into the church and be able to bow to it. My Lord's. At the beginning of my summary in evidence, I told this court I'll be relying on my brothers, the Muslims, their Holy Quran. My Lord, I want to quote from the Holy Quran now as I try to bring my evidence to an end. My Lord, in the Holy Quran, if your Lord will allow me to state this, that Christians and Muslims are from the same great grandfather, Abraham. The son of Abraham by name Ishmael. My brothers traced their lineage from there, and we trace it from Isaac. So we are brothers. My Lord, there are five, as you can see on the screen, five solid Quranic quotations that support Saturday as the seventh day of the week. And in the Quran, it has been stated that it has not been abolished. My Lord, with your permission, I want to quote two of them for the sake of time. Holy Quran, as you can see on the screen, Surah 2, verse 65. Surah 2, verse 65. And indeed, my Lord, I quote, And indeed you, know, you knew those amongst you who transgress in the matter of the Sabbath. My Lord, in the Holy Quran, they put it in bracket Saturday. We said to them, Be you monkeys, despised and rejected. In other words, in the Holy Quran, anyone who despised the seventh day, they refer to them as monkeys, despised and rejected people. Again, Surah 4, verse 154. The Holy Quran, Surah 4, verse 154. And for their covenant, unquote, my Lord, I quote, and for their covenant, we raise over them the mount. And on occasion, to bracket, we said, Enter the gate prostrating, in other words, bowing with humility. And we commanded them, transgress not by doing worldly works on the Sabbath into bracket Saturday. And we took from them a firm, a firm covenant. My Lord, even in the Quran, the sanctity of the Article 4 of Heaven's Constitution is still maintained. My Lord, as I end Exodus chapter 20, verse number 8. Verse number 9, verse number 10, verse number 11 says, God wrote it with his own finger. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day, not the first day, not the second day, not the third day, not the fourth day, not the fifth day, not the sixth day, but the seventh day is heaven's independent celebration on earth. If you please, your Lord should please. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. In it, you shall do no work. 
you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, nor your female servant, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gate. It continues. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth. The sea and all that is in them and rested on the seventh day, not the first day. We have put that beyond all reasonable doubts in this court that the seventh day is Saturday. Therefore, the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. My Lord, if your Lordship recall, I said the word hallowed as interpreted or translated in English means a day or something that is set apart for holy use. And what kind of day that is set apart for holy use can be apart from worship? So the day is for a day of worship. My Lord, I have stated in this court that if Jesus died to abolish the Ten Commandments, heaven's constitution, then God is not a fair God. He's not a just God. Why? My Lord, because when Satan offended or flouted the constitution number 10, thou shalt not covet somebody's property. My Lord, God drove Lucifer and one third of the angels from heaven to this earth. Therefore, if Jesus indeed died to abolish the law, then God is not a fair God, he's not a just God, because he has treated Lucifer and one third of the angels unfairly. My Lord, the wisest man ever lived. I always end with this quote. Solomon says, Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14, and I quote, Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the duty of man. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good or evil. My Lord, for three days, before this court, I have laid in evidence beyond all reasonable doubt, that this constitution of heaven is still valid. The article 4 of heaven's constitution has not been abrogated. Your lordship have heard me. And now I humbly plead that your lordship will give judgment in favor of my client, the almighty God, his son Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Because my lord, very soon, the son will be here again a second time to take candidates for heaven home. And my Lord's candidates for heaven are individuals who live by the Bible and the Bible alone. Not the traditions of the fathers. By the Bible and the Bible alone. My Lord Jesus is coming again. And therefore, if you want to be a candidate for heaven, you must live by this book, the Holy Bible. And the Holy Bible alone. You don't have to live by man's tradition. You don't have to live by man's ideas, but the Holy Bible. My Lord, wherever your lordships are, respectfully, it is not done in court. I want you to bow down your heads. Ask Pastor Nathan leaders in prayer, committing sons and daughters of God who have heard this message, who are willing to yield, and who are in the valley of decision, and contemplating, should we or should we not? My Lord, as the man of God prays, I pray that we all bow down our heads. And listen to the prayer. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will touch somebody's heart tonight. My Lord, before he even prays, let me inform this court that I was a Methodist church member. I was a staunch Methodist in my youthful days. But when the Lord opened my eyes and I saw the Sabbath truth, I had to lead the Methodist church. I say this from personal experience, that we can't plead God when we throw away the Bible and follow tradition. My Lord, as we bow down our heads and pass later and lead us in prayer, let the room be as silent as possible. Almighty God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, the sea and the fountain of waters, you created this world in six days. And on the seventh day, you rested from all your works which you have made. And you made the Sabbath, the seventh day, holy. And you sanctified it. So, Lord, we have come to you to acknowledge your creatorship. We have come to submit to your lordship. That we have no other lord except you, God, who created us. And we have been made in your own image. Thank you that you are leading us to be reconciled back to you. For your word says we shall know the truth mm. and the truth will set us free. Yes, Lord. So thank you for your freedom. Thank you for setting us free today. 
from everything that will easily sin, that will easily beset us, that we will not give worship to you, that we will not give what belongs to you. So, Lord, we have come to worship you, the King and the Lord of Lords. Father, rule in our hearts. Yes. Rule yes, in our minds. Yes. Take absolute control over us, mm. O oh God. Mm. Even as we submit to you, O oh God. Take control. There are some who are in the valley of decision. Speak Lord, Father, make this message plain to them. Speak when they sleep on their beds, O oh God, Father, may they see you explaining. May you reveal to them. May the Holy Spirit empower them that they will be able to see the truth as it is in your word. Lord, may your peace be upon your children at this moment that even as they ponder over the messages of hope that you will soon come and take us home and that indeed they are candidates for heaven, O oh God. May they use their lives totally to you and may you dwell in them and may you walk with them in this walk of faith, hoping and believing on that day when the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall rise and those of us who are alive, we shall be caught up together to meet you in the air, to go to that place, the heavenly kingdom that you have prepared for us. We bless you and thank you. We say thank you for the truth as it is in your word. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we've prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 If you have just prayed this prayer, we just want you to know that wherever you are, there's a possibility for you to learn more. And we are here to guide you to have a deeper understanding to his word. So we have Bible correspondent courses for you, just tailored for you. You can send your request to our WhatsApp number 055-968-0066. Tell us what you need. If you want us to pray for you, we'll be here to help you. If you need any counsel, counseling, we will be able to guide you into, into the truth as it is in God's word. I trust that you can also email us, hopetvghana at gmail.com. God richly bless you for spending this precious time in his presence. I believe his blessings will be upon you. Go in the name of the Lord. And let the peace of the Lord be with you as you prepare to enter into the kingdom of God. Stay tuned and keep listening to Hope TV. God bless you. Lord, you know my wicked nature. Lord, you know my sinful stature. I can hide it from my friends, but you, Lord, read through my heart. Lord, you know my wicked nature. Lord, you know my sinful stature. I can hide it from my friends, but you, Lord, read through my heart.